Hi, I'm Shannon and welcome to my acne skincare series. In this video I'm going to be talking about why we get acne, what causes it, because in order to tackle it we should find out how it got there. So, acne is essentially the inflammation of the pore lining. What happens is with the right, in the right conditions, if there's hormonal imbalance, with hormonal stimulation and the proliferation of a naturally occurring bacteria on the skin called C. acnes, it leads to acne. This bacteria is anaerobic, which means that it thrives in an oxygen-free environment. So that coupled with the improper shedding of skin cells and skin cells turning over far too slowly, it clogs up the pore and it makes for the perfect environment for bacteria to thrive. This leads to inflammation within the pore and it causes breakouts. The prevalence of acne is associated with excess oil and sebum, so it tends to be that people with more oily skin are more acne prone. When oil, sebum, dead skin cells and bacteria enter the follicle, this makes for the perfect environment for the bacteria to thrive and hence cause pimples, pustules, papules, which are all types of acne, and also um, open and closed comedones, which are blackheads and whiteheads. Androgens are heavily associated with acne too. This is a type of male hormone. However, women and men both carry this hormone. This is why men tend to have more nodular cystic acne. And also women with PCOS who have higher levels of androgens, they tend to have more acne, as well as men who are on anabolic steroids, although theirs is also quite fungal in nature. Fungal acne is when there's a yeast overgrowth on the skin because skin has its own skin microbiome, which is the balance of good and bad flora on your skin. It's also the balance of good and bad yeast, and if any of these overgrows, this can lead to acne. Now, what is the difference between stress acne and hormonal acne? Really, all acne has a hormonal component, apart from maybe acne cosmetica, which is caused by cosmetic products clogging the pores, um, and maybe acne mechanica, which is caused by the abrasion of the skin. All acne has a hormonal component, and this is because stress triggers the hormone cortisol. What happens is your adrenal glands overproduce cortisol and this enters the bloodstream and causes a cascade of all sorts of reactions. It can cause the skin to produce more oil and more sebum and this is heavily associated with acne as well. Stress also causes inflammation and acne is heavily attributed to inflammation. So what does all this mean? This means that an imbalance in hormones, imbalances in bacteria on the skin and yeast, elevated stress, and anything that causes stress and inflammation will lead to acne. This is why even after our teenage years, when we think that you know acne will magically disappear as soon as we become an adult at you know 20 or 18, whatever it is, it will go away. But this is not at all true. People of all ages deal with acne, and this is because it has so many components to it. And it's important to find your cause of acne in order to tackle your issues. Everyone is so individual and our skin can be triggered by different things, individual to individual, depending on how you deal with stress and your predisposition towards acne. While men are fairly stable in their hormonal patterns throughout the month, women are hormonally cyclical. This means that we will tend to get more breakouts at certain times of the month and have clearer skin at other times. We tend to notice a pattern of when we break out and when, we, when we're when we fairly okay. Things like stressful life events, things like medications, diet, depending on who you are and what you're allergic to and what you're intolerant to, can all trigger inflammation in the skin, it can all trigger acne. Because this bacteria is anaerobic, things like benzyl peroxide can be very useful in combating this bacteria because it introduces oxygen into the pore so that the bacteria can no longer thrive. Things like salicylic acid can help to change the fatty acid composition of the sebum in your pores. If it's very thick and waxy, can help to thin it down a bit so that it's not as likely to clog in the pore. Your various triggers will vary from person to person. That's why there's no universal diet for preventing acne. There's no universal medication that's going to help everyone with their acne. Apart from Roaccutane, which has been proven to be probably the most effective medication, but that does come with its side effects too. Hormonal birth control has been quite successful in managing people's acne. However, a lot of women find that the moment they come off the hormonal birth control, which you're not going to be on it for the rest of your life, if you want 
to conceive in the future or if you don't want to have um, the complications that come with their blood clots and all that that I'm not going to go into. A lot of women find that after they come off hormonal birth control they will get a surge in their breakouts and their skin will freak out. Now acne, however difficult it may be to deal with, it is fairly common. It's the most common skin disease and it's also going to fluctuate throughout your life. It's important to pick up the habits that will help to control it. Even the people with the best skin are going to get breakouts from time to time. It's inevitable. There are so many triggers for acne in different people. Most, the majority of the world will get a spot at one point or another. It's important. Don't stress about it. Do your best to combat it. You're going to have hormonal fluctuations, stress fluctuations, bacteria fluctuations throughout your life. So this means that even those with the clearer skin at one point or another, they're going to get a spot. It's important just to know the tools to deal with it. And if you're experiencing right now extremely bad breakouts, a lot of acne, I want you to know that you're not alone and that there are solutions to it. I hope this video shed some light on why we get acne and I hope you'll join me for the rest of the series where I'm going to be telling you exactly how you can get rid of it and subscribe for more skincare and wellness related content.